All right, so you want to create your own animation and you want to use uh, motion study to do it and you want to do it as just a really simple animation where you show some movement. Let's go ahead and kind of explore some of the ways that that might be done. We'll insert a new motion study so we have a clean starting point and we've seen this already before where you can come in and add mates and use those mates to automatically change positions. Easiest way to do that is to just kind of set the time where you want it to go, such as one second, and then you can edit the mate. And you can edit that mate up here by editing the definition just the way you always would, and then changing kind of the, the nominal value. Let's do 135. And what that does is it just comes down here and applies it down in the timeline. Now, if you do it that way, here's 135 degrees, here's that initial 90 degrees. Um, just keep in mind that even though you're modifying it up here, you're not changing the model. If we go back to the model tab, it's reverted back to where it was. This is only applying at the motion study, so as long as you keep that in mind, you shouldn't be, have any problems. A um, little bit easier way that I like to do it is I'll come in here and I will actually uh, sort of edit this dimension and then you can go in and, and modify the value. Now in this case, this is a limit distance mate or limit angle mate. So that is um, sort of uh, going to allow you to move within a range when you're in the model tab. But then in the animation tab, you do have the ability to specify which angle you want within that range to apply. Uh, if there was just a regular angle mate, that's still something you'd be able to apply that dimension. And by moving along with these mates, this works really well. And I find that a lot of times you already have these mates in your assembly. So for example, if you've got a, a, an X, Y, and Z axis on a robot, for example, you've already got a, an angle mate or a limit angle mate, and you can just leverage that very quickly to create your animation. So as you hit play, it's going through and just simply playing back those changes in sequential order. Main thing to keep in mind is that if you want the change to occur between a start point and an end point, make sure that you set those keys at the right times to be able to start and stop those components. As long as it's solid, uh, kind of that solid uh, olive green color, that means the mate is active. If it's blue, that means the mate value is changing. And if at any point you want to turn a mate off, you can suppress it and you'll see that that olive disappears. That's a really nice way to sort of let something go. Uh, so for example, in this, in this scenario, I've got a pickup robot. I might want it to actually pick up a box. That box might be mated to its initial starting location when the robot comes down to grab it, it grabs around it. At that point in time, you may come in here and suppress any mates that keep it in the location it was in. And then you might want to actually add new mates to this arm. And then those mates will carry that forward in the animation. So mate kind of juggling is an awesome way. This is probably my most favorite way to make animations is to use mates, turning mates on and off and doing all kinds of stuff like that. Now there's tips and tricks you can do relative to that. I'm going to have a whole video just on tips and tricks related to um, working with these kinds of studies and we'll actually build one with a box in there. But the other way to create a motion study is just with drag motion. Now, a lot of times drag motion is very difficult co to control. So if I say I want this thing to rotate around, I come in and I drag it and I move it around, well notice it actually moved a couple different components and it, I don't know how far they moved it. I'm going to undo that and instead, if you're going to use drag motion, probably your best bet is going to be to say move with triad. So if you say move with triad, you have the ability to rotate or translate that component by a certain value and actually measure how much. 
and it even has a uh, little room uh, scale here where you can snap it, for example, on a 90 degree movement. So right there, that's a perfect 90 degree arc. And then I can go to the next component. Like let's say I want this, uh, this piece right here, this tilt arm, to start tilting down at that point. I don't want it to tilt through the first movement. I want it to start at the end of that one. So I'm going to say I want to capture by placing a key right here at this time frame, one second. And then I'm going to come in, move with triad. And again, we'll just kind of drag this component. Oh, now see this one I can't rotate because of the the kinematics, the way it's controlled. So let's just say I want it to go down 800. Oops. See how easy it is to lose track of where you're at? I gotta go to two seconds. Then I gotta do move with triad. And we'll move it down that 800 millimeters. All right, now let's take a look at what's going on in the in the, the motion tree because there's a lot that's happened all of a sudden and it's going to start to get messy real quick if we're not careful. I'm going to play the animation and it's doing exactly what I want. It's sliding around and then going down. But look at all this action going on in here and look at all these keys. So you have keys at time zero. You always have keys at time zero. That just starts out the uh, the motion study with kind of the initial positions. Then you have these green and yellow bars that are showing up. Green bars mean driving motion. Yellow bars mean driven motion. In the same way a dimension can be driving or driven. So if you grab a component and move it, that is going to be a green bar. That's the one that moves or causes the movement to take place. And if you got a bunch of stuff made into that thing, it's got to come along for the ride. So the one you cause movement to turns green. The ones attached to it turn yellow. Now sometimes you'll see where it's kind of a mixed color like this. That's where it's, uh, it's, it's a little bit more complicated because it's maybe not quite clear which mates are causing the driving and which ones are being driven because of those complex linkages. And in this case, that, that, that appears to be possibly the case where uh, the, the motion here, because it's all connected together, is not as simple as only one part is actually being driven. Now I do have a, a keyframe here that's red. And I don't really know why it's red, but let's see if we can figure that out. I'm going to swing it back around. So I'm going to say, let's see, this was my tilt. No, this was my lower arm, yeah. Let's put a key here for the lower arm. Let's go to three seconds, and then we'll move with triad and rotate it back at 90 degrees. We'll actually end up at whatever it is, 270. We'll animate it and it goes down and then back around. Now this is where we're starting to see some red, some more red. And the reason is I haven't been doing a very good job of choosing what to move. This assembly is complex enough that when I move a specific part, one specific part, uh, it's moving so many other parts that uh, back driving and conflict becomes really prevalent. And so this is another common uh, issue that we see a lot of people come across and they say, well, what's going on here? So your better bet in this case, because of the complex interactions, because it's all put together with mates, your better bet is probably to just use mate animation instead of drag motion. Now, if these weren't all independently connected, drag motion would be a whole lot better. So let's talk about where that drag motion might be even better. Let's say that I've got these guys and I'm trying to animate where they're gonna go. This is a great place where drag motion might be a whole lot less restricting 
because I can come in and say, well, let's move this guy up here. Let's move this guy over here. And we'll kind of drag the initial time there so it just goes up and then over. Speed that up a little bit. And then from there, we want it to go, this guy to go over this way. Set my key first. Place key, then drag it. Then come out to four seconds and drag it down. And so it's almost like we're sorting this thing out. So drag motion is perfect here. I don't have to add a bunch of mates. I don't have to uh, specify anything real specifically. And if I want to use drag motion along with move with triad, I can get a very specific amount of movement and a very specific behavior out of it. And this really kind of boils down to the difference between a kinematic and a dynamic system. A kinematic system like this robot has mates pretty well controlling their positions at all times. If the motor says move, it moves and it stops and positions itself exactly where the motor asks it to. If you try to add one more motor into this assembly, it's going to fight itself. It's not going to move anymore because you got motors fighting motors. If you take one motor off, the thing's probably going to fall apart because gravity's going to take over and the motor's not going to be able to hold it up. So a kinematic analysis like this very much does not lend itself to the drag motion uh, method of animation. You're much better off using the mates that already exist. Whereas with a part like this that's dynamic, whether these are dice that you're rolling or throwing or something like that, a drag motion works really well. Not to say they can't be used together or that they can't overlap, it's just a matter of which ones are going to be more prone to giving you success. I hope that helps. Um, those are some simple ways to create animations. Uh, just pay attention to kind of the keyframes in here and make sure that those keyframes get put in to represent both the start and the endpoint of each operation that you want to perform. We'll see you in the next video.